of Oz. He's the uh, the mighty Oz behind the behind the uh, curtain here. That's you know? a good analogy. I like that. Very so appropriate. We, we are live, so you can share out that link. This is the good, the bad, and the ugly of networking featuring Fanny Dunnigan, Pasquale Palumbo, A.B. Gabor, Heather Hansen O'Neill, with the master connector himself, Steve Spiro, and your lovely co-host, myself, Cameron Toth. I'm so excited uh, to be on the stage with everybody. We got the countdown going, and I'm going to do this full screen so this actually looks kind of something like something. There we go. And uh, so we, we got a few minutes uh, as we, we do the countdown here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to let uh, Steve uh, do a little banter. We're going to encourage uh, some liking and sharing and shouting mm -hmm. out your city and state from uh, folks joining us on the live feed. I am so excited. We always have great uh, folks in the comment section. So if you're watching us, make sure you're sharing where you're viewing from. We want your comments. We want your questions. Today we are talking about all of the um things that can go right and wrong with networking. That's why we've called it the good, the bad, the ugly of networking. I have, uh, just Cameron, I gotta say you, you are, you are amazing. So the, the video content, the graphic content, super funny, cool. Um, Heather, I'm disappointed. I, I was expecting the hat. Uh, yeah. on, I'm like, I forgot the hat. You know? <laughs> She said, I so it doesn't go too. with my your fire uh, a background. It's like, I got to be color coded. <laughs> you got yeah. Cameron, I, I was expecting your hat too. That was hysterical. All right, um, thank you. I didn't get the video. memo then. <laughs> was there a hat memo? <laughs> so, yeah, so, so there there was a video. I'll, I'll, uh, let, me, I'll Let me see if I can play it here. You should play it. Here. Sure. It All right, I, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll, I'll, I'll get there. I got to get my live feed up. We already got comments and I want to start displaying them. So we'll start. Yeah, so welcome this. everybody. If you're, if you're watching now, it looks like we got Oscar Capel on the house. Welcome Oscar. David Pascaru, the video genius is in the house. Our good people, Chris Dutra, he is a loyal follower. Maddie Klein, Madeline Klein, she's helping me write my book. She's awesome. McGenna is in the house. Hey, McGenna. Uh, we, we, we finally know how to NYC. say her name right. So. NYC, exactly. Uh, Luann is in the house, my, my fellow Connecticutite. Uh, welcome, Luann. Good to have you here. James Lujan. I'm, oh, James. James, Jana, James and I sp spoke today. He is coming for us from, from Seattle. So West Coast. You, you know, we got the left coast uh, coming in here. Uh, who else is in here? Let's see. Uh, obviously, Fanny, you're on here too. <laughs> <laughs> gotta engage. That's right. That's right. Gotta engage. Yep. And Mr. Chris Dutra. Uh, I'm sorry, Chris. Well, Chris Dutra too, but Chris Januski is in the house. Chris, Chris is awesome. We we are so excited to have Chris. You know, he's just always been such a great supporter. Um, let's see, Brian Bulakowski. Welcome, oh, Brian. Brian. All right. Connecticut. Yeah, tell us where you're coming from, where you're where you're from. I'm 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 only looking at the, the comments on my side. So uh, make sure you're identifying where you're where you're located, like Connecticut or whatever uh happen to be. And and also um also tell us who and how you heard about it. We'd love to hear how you heard about the show, uh who invited you, how you heard about the show. Love to get some feedback from you on that. Um, if you wouldn't mind posting that from us for us. Um well, so if you can, just go ahead and while we're pre-show right now, take the link right right from here and go share it. Like, you know, go on, make it, get a link of it, go text it to some friends, get get people to, to know what's going on here because this could be a great opportunity uh, for you to, to add value for other people. Also, it's going to be some great networking. So use the opportunity on the chat with everyone who's participating in chat. You guys should connect with each other offline on LinkedIn. Get, you know, can, you know, make sure you 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 follow you know follow up with each other, right? Because this is a great uh, community that we're creating as well. So please do do that if you haven't as re as well. It's um, the new way networking in comments. Exactly, exactly. Yes. It's awesome. Yeah. So and I, and I and I love commenters because you know if if they're a commenter, that's somebody you want to connect with because they're going to actually participate and engage with your content. So we love the folks that engage. 
Absolutely. I like I like I like that Heather Hansen on Neil had to clarify that she was the good and not the ugly. <laughs> Not me, that we're going to do good networking, not ugly networking. <laughs> I'll let the rest of you decide what kind of networking I'll give you. But <laughs> I got to say this, regarding comments, when I'm actually in the peanut gallery, I love to try to make one of the panelists uh, just lose their mind and go uh, and just start laughing. Don't give them ideas. <laughs> oh, ready. We'll handle it. We'll handle it. Remember what you wish for. <laughs> There you go. Yes, I know my brother Oscar will be uh, at the ready to do that. Look at this great crowd you guys have. This is awesome. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's fantastic. We've, we've, we've really this. built something here that's really nice. So I want to shout out some great folks. Job. Madeline Klein from Boca Raton, Florida. I love people uh, representing there from. Fanny, definitely in here. Dallas, Texas. Thanks, Fanny. Uh, who else we got? We got Brian from Brookfield, Connecticut. Myself from Valhalla, New York, representing in the comments here. I know we have Chris Januski from Yonkers. James Luhan, we shouted him out before. Seattle, uh, Richfield, Connecticut. Luann DePrado, Chris Dutra, White Plains, New York. As close as that are close to me. I know Oscar said he was in NYC. Uh, definitely keep telling us where you're calling in from. Guys, make sure you're sharing this feed. Uh, I'm going to see if I can share this. Uh, we've got about a minute to go, and this is about a minute long video. Let's see if I can uh, make this happen here. I'm going to try this to. This is hysterical it. if you could get this working. No. This is yeah, no, here we go. Here we go. Super funny, creative. We need some it's like party music. It's Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. <laughs> hey, we got Austin Stewart from Quito, Ecuador, is joining us. So nice. we're, we're outstanding. Wow. 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 Let's go. Here we go. Love that we're international. Yeah. Absolutely. Of networking. <laughs> Our expert panel, Danny Dunnigan, Squally uh, Palumbo, Amy DeBoer, and Heather Anton O'Neill. I feel very embarrassed now, but that was that was Bravo. good stuff. Right. That was awesome. Hey, Cameron, did you have gloves on? Did you have like leather gloves too? Yeah, yeah. I'll, you, I'll, I'll say yes to that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Like a General George Custer look. Oh my gosh. Oh, bravo, Jeez. bravo, Cameron. Well Thank done. you very much. So I, I got to well do one more, one more piece of uh, video content here to satisfy uh, all of our folks here. We got to uh, make sure, uh, guys, if uh, you haven't uh, heard of uh, Sean Lashley and uh, his amazing 10K cards, 10,000 cards, uh, definitely check him out. Uh, he is providing a digital card for all of our presenters today for your use. Uh, it's a great digital card to use. Uh, Clubhouse is uh, where Sean Lashley is living these days. And so uh, yeah. and you can use that on your Instagram bio and allow people to find you uh, wherever you are at. And here we go. A little bit more of the content. Hold on one second if I can make the audio work here. First of all, we got the Master Connector logo and... Let's see if I can make this work here. Got to play the other video with the with the globe there, sir. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I know. It's all right. <laughs> I'm going to get the job. audio here. Um, yeah. if, you were, if you would do a light introduction of the presenters while I make this work, I would really appreciate that, Steve. Do you want me to do the regular intro or the? the, the... Go ahead. Yeah, you can start us uh, off on what it's yeah. what this is all about. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start here. So, hey, folks, uh, good afternoon, good morning, whatever it is, wherever you are. Uh, could be uh, could, good night, but whatever. Uh, so, hey, it's Steve Spiro, the Master Connector. Uh, Cameron and I really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, welcome to our show. 
Uh, each week on Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we come at you with engaging content on how you can also be a master connector. You know, as a shy, introverted kid from the Bronx to someone who has grown a massive network and can talk to just about anyone, there's definitely been lots of great lessons along the way, like most of us have now. And it's been a it's been a winding road. Um, but from starting out as an, having an advertising company out of college to a martial arts studio to technology sales and now consulting and mentoring, uh, you know, self-development has been very crucial for me. And I've had to learn to adapt and keep growing. Right. I love sharing what I've learned. Uh, please make sure to check out my Fire Up Friday Master Connector tip videos that I post every Friday. I did one today. Um, thanks to my good friend, Sean Lashley, our sponsor of 10K Cards. I have a digital card that catalogs all 60 plus weeks in one place. Check them out. Please DM me if you want. I'll send you the digital card. It's pretty awesome. Check out Sean Lassie for, for sure. But during this Master Connection series, each week our goal is to gather subject matter experts, right, as you can see here, to impart their wisdom on all of us, including Cameron and I. You know, hey, we're always learning, so keep, you know, give us some a little bit of grace here, right? Uh, but you got to keep growing. And so I'm blessed to have my co-host, Cameron Toth, uh, founder of uh, Toth Event Staffing, and now the co-host of Biz Dev Live weekdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, as well as Biz Dev Live networking on Tuesday at noon, 12 noon Eastern Time. Don't miss either. They're awesome. And I know, Cameron, I'm going to turn it back over to the MC, uh, the the, uh, the the Wizard of Oz, the, the almighty Oz behind the camera. I appreciate you, sir. And I'll let you take it from here and maybe do some intros. Friday. Fired up Friday. With Steve Spiro, the Master Connector. I am Steve Spiro, the Master Connector. Over the next hour of this Master Connection series, we will take a deep dive into the different ways to connect and network effectively. See us and hear us right now. So LinkedIn, we are on here. We're getting ready. Hear from experts along with Steve Spiro who went from being shy and introverted to the master connector. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a Master Connections series. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to introduce everybody today. I'm so glad to be on the stage with such amazing people. We have inspirations and mentors all. Uh, I'm very excited about this. And uh, let me just push some buttons here. And uh, <laughs> Fanny standing in the background, I want to see a picture of Shy Steve Spiro. So uh, I, I think you saw him in, uh, in the uh, good, bad, and ugly uh, preview of this in the Clint Eastwood outfit. That was that was the Shy uh, version of uh, Steve Spiro. Here we go. All right. So here are my my introduction pieces. Uh, I want to uh, go through an order here. So over uh, to the side of me, we have Mister. Pasquale Palumbo. Pasquale Palumbo is a financial services professional who has built his network by a caring and values-based approach to connecting both in person and virtually. He's involved in master networks, the Business Council of Westchester, the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce, and BizDev Live. Please welcome to the main stage, Pasquale Palumbo. Thanks for having me, folks. All right, and then we, next up, we're gonna go to Heather Hansen O'Neill. For over 19 years, Heather Hansen O'Neill has been firing up audiences to move through fear and achieve massive results. Heather says, there is nothing like helping clients go from unsure, distracted, and struggling to focused, profitable, and joyful. Please welcome the Find Your Fire Queen. Please welcome to the main stage, Heather Hansen O'Neill. All right, and next up we have Mr. A.B. Gabor. A.B. Gabor is a born storyteller. He is somebody that brings people into the richness of life. He has done everything from build a uh, chain of supermarkets to really just providing value and opportunity in people's lives every day. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. A.B. Gabor. All right, and finally, I got to talk about Miss Fanny Dunnigan. She is a LinkedIn goddess. It was said before, she is my inspiration uh, for doing this live stuff. She's 
amazing. Um, she's super humble. So like when she gave me her bio, she's like, like six <laughs> words in it, but this is the thing. She is a connector. She is somebody that teaches uh, other folks how to actually do this whole LinkedIn thing. She gave me the strategies to really uh, bring my LinkedIn profile and my post to the next level. Please welcome to the main stage, Miss Fanny Dunnigan. Thank you for being here, Fanny. Hi, everyone. And then I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the one and the only, our host grandeur, Mr. Steve Spiegel, the master connector. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to get right into the, the content of this. There's like 29 comments that I have uh, while I've been uh, in this that I haven't shown up on the screen, but I want to get the conversation started. So, you know, the first thing that we want to talk about is the ugly. Uh, so I'm looking for all my folks in the comments section. Guys, talk to us about uh, the worst things uh, that have kind of been thrown at you. We'll, we'll definitely address it with the panel. And, you know, if you've got questions around how to handle it, uh, we definitely want to hear that. Uh, for my folks, if you guys will utilize that, that private chat function and let me know who wants to jump into this first uh, so that we can get the conversation started. I would very much appreciate that. And so mm -hmm. Heather Hansen is quick on the draw. She's gonna jump in here. So, you know, one of the things that we wanna do is obviously there's some, some negative instances. We wanna keep that brief and then, you know, how do we handle that, right? Because that's the real question is not how to be negative, but how to actually get some positivity. So maybe we even have some stories about how we turn the negative experience into something positive. Miss. Heather Hansen, O'Neill, thank you so much for jumping in. Hey, Cameron, thank you. I thought I was like practicing my quick draw. I thought it was kind of fun. So, you know, I think that there's a, a an element that I find that transitions from the in-person networking here to our virtual networking that kind of bugs me across the board as far as the ugly. Like when you, when we were doing the live networking and people would come up and they'd be talking to you, handing you the card, telling you the story, and then looking over your shoulder to see if somebody better was walking in and not really listening when you were telling your story. Well, I find that sometimes that happens here virtually as well, where people are just kind of spewing out their stuff and then moving on before asking or seeming to care. Now, um, I know that nobody here does that but maybe you've experienced it on the receiving end of that and so we can make sure to focus on being intentional with your attention on the people that you're connecting with asking great questions being interested more than interesting danny had a, a question as well or a comment Oh, hey, yeah. So I think uh, everything Heather said is absolutely valid. And I want to go one better with that. Um, I know that <clears throat> I want to do business with people that I want to that I connect with on an intellectual level and an emotional level. Um, and so I, I kind of cringe immediately when I say, hey, how are you? My name is Pasquale. How are you? What's your name? They tell me their name. And then they immediately go into a pure sales pitch. They don't tell me who they are. They don't tell me what their background is like, oh, I offer X, Y, and Z discount. I'm like, I, I don't even have a use for your product, but maybe I want to learn how to help you, you know, because maybe somebody in my arena could use your services, but I'm not going to recommend them if you're just going to come with the hard sales pitch, bro, you know? So just, you know, talk to me a little bit about who you are. Don't start selling me right away. That's the easiest way to, to have me detach and be the guy that's going to look over your shoulder to see who else is coming up next. And I think it's really hilarious. I was in a group um, recently where the moderator of the group said, do not give your sales pitch. Just tell your story. And a person in the breakout room gave the sales pitch. Amazing. Gotcha. You're good. See, you got me too early. And then I, I'm... <laughs> So, so, hey, I am going to be completely transparent with you guys, and I'm going to give a story about myself. Okay, now these this is years ago when I when I you know was challenged to get outside of my comfort zone and start just meeting strangers, and uh, it was definitely not in my DNA. Right, as a New Yorker, you know, you're taught don't talk to strangers. Right, um, 
And so I had sort of set this personal goal. I was going to convert three total strangers into new friends every day. Uh, and so I was on a mission. So here I am. I, I think I was in a diner's restroom. Okay. And I'm, I'm there do, doing, doing business, if you know what I mean. And I start a conversation to the guy on my left. And, you know, I don't know what I said. And, and uh, you know, we, we started talking and, and I thought it was kind of okay, normal, but uh, I think he thought it was, something was a little funny. And so I got a call at midnight that day saying, hey, Steve, I like the way you look. Let's meet up somewhere. And I'm like, okay, well, now one, one thing I learned about networking, first of all, I probably don't want to do it in a, in a restroom. Number two, I'm going to always mention something about my wife about my wife when I'm talking to people so they don't think I have some kind of weird intention going on, uh, you know, and that can happen with both, you know, it doesn't matter what the, the gender is here. So anyway, don't do that. That's all I can say. Don't do that. I love it. All right, we're going to go over to Fanny. I want to reiterate, LinkedIn is not a dating app. <laughs> do not use it to reach out to people and start telling them about their looks and saying inappropriate things. Um, unfortunately, that's happened um, quite a few times, and I think a lot of times to to females, and um, not to discriminate against you males, but uh, do not use LinkedIn for that purpose. There's plenty of other apps out there from what I hear, and um, just keep it professional. I mean, I think it's definitely still important to keep it personal in terms of exchanging of ideas and stories and all that, but uh, unfortunately, there's just a a few creeps out there, <laughs> um, but uh, keep it professional. That's my, yeah, I, I think it's thoughts. really important. I mean, there's so many good things to find, but yeah, that's the, that's the way not to be. Go ahead, Amy. So, you know, I, I, especially these days uh, during COVID, I find it very um, effective just to be real, just to speak to people from the heart Nowadays, that's what people are looking for. And, and if someone is just going straight for the sale or straight for whatever it is, well, you know what? It's always, at least this is what I tell myself, it's about them. And you know what? If, if, if things are going south or not going right or you don't like it, it's no worry on you. It's them. Just be real. And, and you're going to connect with the people that you need to connect with. And, and, and it'll, it'll just work out. Remember, this is all about connections, not about collections. Yeah, I love that, and I and I want to say uh, there was a lot of feedback when when Fanny was talking about uh, the the creepers out there that are you know we we'll, we'll call them the creepers right the folks that are uh, doing uh, what's you know I think you know Pasquale mentioned as we got onto this is this PG thirteen you know what what rating is this show and you know definitely like LinkedIn in particular. I don't think you should probably be creeping on any platform unless you're on like Tinder or something like that. And then even then, uh, there's a way to do it, fellas. Let's let's be honest, right? Um, but being professional, being respectful is is always the right way to go. And I think the ugly side of networking is when anyone is disrespectful. Uh, I I was mentioning, you know, sort of my uh, experience before we jumped onto this is that you know i'm reaching out to people i'm, I'm fostering connection and marketing uh the programs the shows that i'm doing and so sometimes somebody will hit you back well oh, how many times did you send that message out to somebody and i think we forget uh you know i i know for me uh, if somebody reaches out to me and it seems a little generic i don't take it as offense I'm, I'm pretty delighted or pretty excited uh that somebody has found me and so it might not go uh, in the right direction. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So we wanted to talk, we talked a little bit about the ugly. We want to talk about the bad. We want to highlight the telltale signs of a bad connection. So what are indications that a connection has gone bad? Hmm. Are there ways to salvage bad connections? Who wants to, to jump in on this first? I want to share a story, Ashley. Uh -huh. um, so I... This brings me back to when we were still face to face. Um, I had a connection that um, I met somebody at a networking event. It was a tech event and they let off. They were looking for a job. And so for all those job seekers out there, um, please beware that when you start networking, 
do not lead with that. Do not immediately start outlining your resume and all your attributes and achievements to people at an event. Um, definitely try to engage with them, but uh, they started off listing all their achievements to me and um, and came off quite arrogant, actually. Um, and And that immediately turns off a lot of people that immediately kind of has them tune out. I was trying to be nice, so I continued to listen to him. And um, and ironically, what happened out of that is I left that conversation thinking, I never want to speak to this person again. When a few months later, they ended up reaching out and because I do a lot of content on LinkedIn and coaching, they ended up reaching out and wanting to hire me for my LinkedIn coaching service. And I was so hesitant to take them on as a client. but. And so I actually let him know how arrogant he came off at the networking event. And I told him that I'm I'm hesitant to take him on as a, a, a client. And so I was very honest. Um, and funny enough, they totally mellowed out after that. And it totally changed his attitude. He became very humble and ended up being a client. So uh, it was a very unique story, but I want to share that to, to let people know, don't come off as arrogant, but I am open to people that are willing to change. And I think we have to be open that sometimes all we have to do is share with them some honesty and they might be willing to change. We, we have a question from the audience. I'm gonna, I know I got folks that want to jump in, but I wanted to get the uh, question answered because the chat is going so fast and I'm, uh, I'm afraid to, to lose it. So um, while while we're answering this question, I want the audience, you know, you can ask you can ask questions around this as well, right? We want to highlight the telltale signs of a bad connection. What are indications that a connection has gone bad, and are there ways to salvage bad connections? We have our, our expert panelists up here who are amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh, but we I know there's a lot of knowledge uh, that are. Uh, folks that are watching this that can add value to the conversation. So definitely please add your comments. We want to hear your input as well. Uh, your participation is super valuable. So Fanny, if you can um, just uh, respond to this, Monica Warrick has this question. Any suggestions for successfully reaching out to someone in a different industry you are thinking of going into and actually building a relationship, getting a response? Mm. I think number one is to definitely do your research in that industry. And then from there, start looking at that person that you're trying to reach at their feed and at their content and point some things out about it. Um, raise some subjects or topics in that new industry that you would like their inputs on or maybe share an article with them and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking of going into this industry. What do you think of the contents of this article? So I think really focus on the topic. Um, never ever start off a conversation with, I need a job, you know, look at my profile kind of thing. Um, I think start with topics and mutual subjects that you can discuss and then go from there. I love that. All right, and I know we got a couple of people that that want to add some some input on this question. So I want us to go back to talking about you know telltale signs of a bad connection. But just I know uh, Pasquale and I think uh, and I Steve answer. wanted to answer Monica and just put a little bit more feedback. Go ahead. Yeah, just real quick. Um, you know, I noticed that most of the people who are appearing on the bottom of the screen they have a little LinkedIn icon. So leverage that tool. You know, if you're thinking about going into an industry that is different than you're engaged in right now, look at your network and see who is either in that industry or, you know, one or two steps away from connected to that industry and simply ask for an introduction. People love to talk about what they do and they're always looking to bring new people into their industry. So, you know, a conversation doesn't cost anybody anything, but you got to leverage your network to get there. I love this. I'm going to th throw this in the middle of the conversation. Okay, it says, uh, Haha, when Fanny never wants to talk to someone again, as nice as she is to the world, you know, she had a bad experience on that one. I, and I, I was thinking to myself, I, I completely agree. And ironically, he became a friend. <laughs> <laughs> he changed. He changed. Steve, I know you wanted to throw some uh, input into Monica's question. Well, she had a second question because Pasquale, you stole my thunder, sir. Great job with that. <laughs> good, good. Yes, yeah, so I learned from the best. So yeah, as absolutely. A female, well, I, I learned from you, sir. 
but yeah, I definitely agree. You know, you want to, you, you can find someone in your network that can introduce you. Cause you know, I learned this years ago in networking that you're a lot more effective when somebody else talks about you versus you talk about you. Right. So mm. that could happen, whether it be on LinkedIn or if we ever go back to real life networking and, and, you know, in actual settings, uh, I remember my friend, Bill Shulman, he, he would, uh, he would talk about this. He said, Hey, uh, let's go do networking meetings together. And I could be on one side of the room and you could be on the other. And I'll talk about you when I when appropriate and, and vice versa. Right. It's a great way to talk about each other. So you could do that, whether it be in the actual real real life setting or on social media is refer refer people. And it's a great way to add value. Right. Um, so I think Monica and I don't know if you could find it, but Monica had a second question. If you could pull that up. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I don't know if you but but that was that was actually. um yeah, she says another question as a female, and maybe this isn't yeah. gender related, but I feel so weird talking about my accomplishments and articulating my value. Any suggestions for how to balance this and still come across genuine? So I know you just addressed it. And actually, if, if for everybody that's watching, you sort of saw it in a uh, demonstration because Steve talked about me and I and I talked about Steve. And one of the nice things I think that we do on this show is that you know there's somebody else introducing uh, the guests versus the guests introducing themselves so that you have a little bit of that um, feeling of like, here's somebody else endorsing. And, you know, we have an expert panel and we want to talk about them in that way. Right. Um, and so I, I don't want to steal all the thunder here to talk about this. And I know yeah, Heather I just wanted, wanted to, 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 to talk well. about this one. Yeah. A little bit, you know, with, with, with this question, it, it's, it's similar to what you just said, Cameron, right. Where you could tell stories, about somebody that you know or that you've worked with and and what they've told you uh, or, or what they've mentioned about you or or how you've helped bring value to them through a story and that's how you could talk about your credentials without sounding overly pompous and and like you know inflated right because you're just telling stories so that's a great way it's 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 almost the same idea as somebody else talking about you but you're just saying you know, so, you know, and you got to keep it natural. You got to sound, you got to sound like it's not like, you know, some kind of technique or anything, but, but genuine telling stories. And, and that is a great way that you can actually talk about your credentials. Love it. All right. We're going to go over to Heather. Okay. Thank you, Monica. I love that you asked this question, but I'm going to tell you that the fact that you asked this question means that you don't have to worry. Me meaning that you're already coming from a space of caring about other people and making sure that you're not crossing any boundaries. So you're not ever going to be one of those people that we were talking about when we were talking about the ugly and what we're going to be talking about in the bad. What I would um, say for you and for most women out there who who this question really resonates with them and I found this a lot because I work a lot with women is that you know we we are nurturers we come across as wanting to help other people and what happens is our our needs don't get met or we don't establish our credibility our authority because we're so worried about making sure everybody is okay and I and I just want to throw it out there that your voice needs to be heard Right. I am certain that your voice needs to be heard. Your talents need to get out there. And so when you set an intention for having a collaboration, a connection that is going to be mutually beneficial, then you can release any pressure that you're going to come across in the wrong way. Make sure that you and the other person have that that value of I'm, you know, let me just put it this way. Okay, so I work a lot with people who have belief systems that need to be released. And sometimes, I'm not saying it's you, but sometimes women have a belief system that their voice isn't supposed to be heard because when they were growing up, they heard something like, you should be seen, not heard. Or, you know, this is a man's field. And what you want to do is you want to look at those belief systems first and release the ones that either aren't true, aren't yours, or aren't serving you. And then you can come fully into the conversation with the right intentions to serve. Love it. All right. We're going to go over to Pasquale, who's going to talk about, uh, we're going to go back onto the topic of uh, bad connections and how do we know it's going bad and what do we do with it once uh, once we got it. And Tina, thanks, thanks for uh, affirming that. And uh, for women, feel confident. We got a lot of uh, women in the, in the audience too. I want to push uh, Monica to Elizabeth, who's um, been 
somebody that's just a, an amazing person for women. Go ahead, Pasquale. Uh, so the common denominator between the <clears throat> six of us in this room is that we're, we, we believe deeply in, in connection and relationships. And the, the key to having a successful relationship is that it's a two-way street. So there's an exchange of goods, there's an exchange of services, an exchange of ideas. But the important part is that there's an exchange. You start to tell that a connection has gone bad when, you know, I always ask people, how can I help you? How can I help you grow your business? Um, that's just my way. But when the opposite person simply asks, you know, how can you help me? And that becomes the way that they conduct their relationship with you. That becomes a one-way relationship, and they're only interested in their gain, not yours. That that's a pretty solid indicator that the relationship is going south. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, you want to see, you want to see uh, some some concern from both parties, not just one way. And you know what? It's so funny because we're talking about networking, right? But that's the way we know with uh, a relationship too. If we have a friend that's always taking, always taking always taking and never giving that's not a sign of a good friendship so it's it's uh it's pretty universal go ahead steve i mean so i mean great point pasquale right so if you're always going into a relationship into a potential new relationship into you know connecting or networking with a give value there it is jay just said it, add value you're going in adding value this is never going to be a challenge but the, the challenges that I've seen, and I'll give you one bad, and, and also it was what's bad, but also how do you help, right? Um, so I was actually, uh, we were talking about before networking uh, uh, partner. So I went with a, a good friend, um, I won't mention his name, I don't want to convict him, but we went to a networking event, this is before COVID. There was actually a speaker's presentation and then we, um, we, we actually went up to the speaker and we started to, we want to introduce ourselves and, and he started and the guy asked him, you know, and I, I don't know if the guy, the speaker asked uh, my friend what he did or just he, he told him what he did. And, and I think four minutes later, he was still telling him what he did and I never had a chance. So, so basically I was like, it's nice to meet you. I didn't even want to, you know, and I said, you know, can I, can I, you know, do you have a contact information? I'd love to stay in touch with you. And he gave his card. Cause, cause to me, it's not about that initial and you, you know, people who know me, you know, I say this a lot. It's not about the initial contact. It's, it's the, the magic, the, the, the beauty, the, you know, the, 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 the real, um, secret sauce is in the follow. I know AB says that a lot too. It's follow up. Right. And so you're not going to be able to build a relationship in that initial interaction. So it's follow up. So what I did with my friend is I, I later on, we, we spoke, I told him a little bit about what had happened and I suggested. I said, in my opinion, when you're meeting somebody, um, you know, with uh, you know, for the first time, what you should we should look to do is say maybe a sentence or less about what you do, but more talk about that person, speak about them, you know, find out, be genuinely interested in that other person. Don't talk about yourself, please. Don't talk about yourself. Say it, you know, you got to answer a question if they ask you what you do, but I keep it to like three words, right? And then, and then I put it right back on them. So that's the, the bad, and that's how I think we, you you can go to somebody like what Fanny talked about, and actually kind of in a very loving, and I talked about grace in my Fire Friday video today, with some grace, help people, right? Because it's, I think we're all work in progress. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share. I love it. All right, so we, we got so many uh, great comments here. Go ahead, A.B., you are up. You got to unmute. So I, I wanted to segue on what you said, Cameron, as, as well as you, Steve, you kind of w was on my thoughts. So, you know, not only with networking, but also with friendships. Uh, this is something that I've experienced when, when, when you might have a, a friendship that's gone bad because that you, you might get into a conversation and that man or woman can only talk and talk and talk about themselves and you really can't get anything in and but it's not even that you might even want to get anything in because it, based on what they're doing all of a sudden you're saying you know what this might not be the right it might be going bad just because i've had this relationship for so long this might be going bad and the same thing goes with networking as well so people love to talk about themselves more than anything else so i totally agree with steve you know what say your name 
tell them why you are what about them attracted you what about what they said what was attracted to you and all of a sudden before you know it just from your posture they're going to want to ask you hey what you know what's going on with you or 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 or, or and then get to want to know you it just happens organically if you put it out there that way yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And I'll, I'll kind of cap this on the bad and unless somebody else wants to jump in. But um, one of the things that really kind of starts rubbing me the wrong way is somebody really hasn't, you know, like Steve said, that initial thing, like, you know, we're talking, I don't really, I don't sweat it, but the continued and we have a comment. Um, uh, Gahan says that the, the challenge becomes when someone wants to connect immediately ask not once, but multiple times how they can help me, but I don't have a specific ask in the moment, or maybe won't ever. Uh, I had somebody that they were asking me constantly, like, um, uh, you know, there was somebody in like the, the de-stress field and they were like, so, you know, are, do you feel stressed all the time? And that kind of question in my messages on LinkedIn, when you don't know me, it felt so uncomfortable. It felt like they were digging into my personal life. This stranger was digging into things and I'm like, dude, why? No, it's not, we're not there yet. Like we don't have a relationship yet. And uh, my way of, of trying to deal with that was like letting them know that I was uncomfortable. Like I'd like to meet up. And, and it was interesting that the response to that was, and, and, and do you feel stressed in your, and you're like, oh boy, all right, here we go. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me cut and paste that last response. So uh, with that, I'll move. Let me see if. Uh, uh, all right. So we have. Oh, did Monica ask another question? No, I, I just want to add one quick thing to Please. Monica's um, question. I, as a female, as an Asian, I, I grew up actually, you know, told to like, like um, keep quiet and just kind of sit in my corner and not raise my voice. And I'm still, you know, that that permeates through our past, through our childhood. And I think now, especially as an entrepreneur, now more than ever, especially as females, we need to be sharing our voice. We need to be sharing our messages. If not, otherwise we're the only ones holding ourselves back. And that would be a shame. Um, and I think one of the, the tricks to doing that is you can share an achievement in like one sentence, like, uh, you know, you can share, I'm a, I'm a LinkedIn coach, but then you can immediately move to questions and engagement with that person about, you know, are you on the platform as well? Is there anything I can help you with? And so forth. So I don't see anything wrong with highlighting your achievements as long as it's kind of in this one or two sentence way. And then you can move to what uh, Steve was saying, providing value after that. Um, but I'm here to reaffirm and tell everyone out there that it's so critical, especially as females, to be sharing your voice and don't be the one to hold yourself back. Yeah, I, I'm so glad that you said that because I've, I've mentioned on the on the female support system, I want to support women in the industry. It's really amazing. I have a wife and daughter and I see it the struggle in it with them, with Monica saying, I don't feel great talking about my accomplishments. Meanwhile, I'll have a male candidate with twice, or uh, sorry, half the resume come in uh, and they are very much affirming how awesome they are, the level of experience they are. And it's, and it, and it's not necessarily braggadocious. They're just, you know, they're in the interview setting or they're in that moment where I'm saying, hey, you know, what's your qualification? And they're very comfortable stating, I did this, I did that, I did that. It's not bragging if you're simply stating the facts of what you've done. And it's different from saying, oh, I'm a hard worker, right? And I, I, I totally don't want anybody to say that as they're walking into a job interview. I don't want to hear that you're a hard worker or that you show up on time or, or any of that, because that's what everybody should be doing. But really, like when you have experience, you have metrics, you have a social media following, you have um, this many years being able to simply state, I've worked five years in this industry, 10 years in this industry, I'm senior in my post, I love what I do, and I have done and executed this amount of business in that amount of time. That's what I definitely want to hear from every single candidate, male, female, 
transgender, wherever you are in the world, whoever you are, I want you to step into your full self and show your full confidence, especially when the question is being put out there. And when it comes time to write your LinkedIn bio, which uh, Fanny, maybe you'll talk to um, as we get into this next conversation. I know Steve, uh, you wanted to share a funny story. I'm just gonna put this out there. Uh, I put the post out there uh, so that uh, the audience can respond to it, but we want to highlight best practices. So audience, uh, folks in the comments, please tell us best practices, things that you enjoy doing, uh, great ways that you love to connect. What are ways to be an awesome network, an awesome networker, and an amazing connection? Yeah, I, I don't know if this is anticlimactic because you started talking, Cameron, about some uh, some kind of funny stuff that people are coming at you with. And and there's somebody in my in my network through LinkedIn, I, I'm not going to mention his name, and call him out. But every time he reaches out to me after like after the initial hello, it's always. So what kind of shoes are you wearing these days? <laughs> and I'm like, huh? Like, and, I, and I'm being polite. But at one point, I don't know if he's going to be listening to this, but hope, hopefully, listen, the point I'm making is it's like what you said before, Cameron, like, you know, asking a personal question like that, like that my shoes is personal. It's just so out of the blue. It's like, what does that have to do with what we're, you know, I mean, like, so just just be normal. Uh, uh, you know, I have a good friend of mine. He's he's he he coined the initials DBW. Don't be weird, you know, yeah. uh, be normal. <laughs> And, uh, and and then you'll be able to connect more effectively with people. So that's all I want. Don't, 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 please don't message me and ask me what shoes I'm wearing, okay? I love it. All right, Heather, you're, you're up. Sure, um, but I can't jump into what I, what I had without addressing the, the, the weird shoe question. So <laughs> I, I'm sorry. So listen, I agree with you and I could care less whether you're wearing flip flops or loafers or what, what you have on Steve, it's none of my business. Um, but I've learned finally to embrace my weirdness. So I'm going to, I'm going to have the, you know, be weird versus don't be weird philosophy because I, you know, one of the biggest things that I had to overcome was this feeling that everybody had to like me. And so in order to be the person that everybody has to like, I'm ne I was never me, you know? And so I had to start to embrace me knowing that that might turn off some people, but with the full conviction that it will draw the people that are my people to me. So I'm all about being weird. So I'm not listening to that one. Um, <laughs> so the transition- I, I, think, I think we're talking about good work, good weird, I know. Right? I'm a nerd. I like my particular yeah, interests. Yeah, that's cool. Right? right. Yeah, I'm well, pretty sure weird, man. If being weird is who you authentically are, then yeah. be yourself. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, all right, all right. Now it's out. Being weird is who I authentically am. But to tra to transition into um, the good that may help some of the uh, the the previous conversation that we were talking about. This was told to me, gosh, like twenty years ago, and it really has always stuck with me. Somebody said. You're when you're at a networking event, you are never selling the person that you're talking to. If you come into it as if you're not selling them at all, you don't want their business. You're having an honest, open conversation. What ultimately happens is that you lower the walls and it then opens their mind and their database. So it's not about selling one person. You've now opened yourself in doing it the right way to everyone that they know. Because if you built that report and you're not selling them, but you're connecting with them and you're asking them questions and you're in it, you're present with them, then they're going to be like, gosh, I really like this person. How can I help them? And suddenly it opens up everyone that they know to you. I love it. And and I just wanted to highlight this great comment from uh, Tina. Uh, Fanny, great tip about voice. I share that as well. Uh, which we need to own our own power, speak our truth while having the courage to speak your truth authentically. And I know, Fanny, one of your your uh, taglines, shine your light. Uh, I, I love uh, the female empowerment uh, in the comments. Keep it going. <laughs> I like Liz's kind of weird as the new normal following up on uh, Heather's uh, piece. I appreciate that. All right, Amy, you're up. So one of my best practices is, is quite simply your excitement level, you know, and, 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 and smile and be yourself. If you show some excitement in the way you are and not just monotone and, and down, people are going to be attracted to you. And then, you know, you the conversation could lead any which way you want. You could just talk to them about what they're passionate about. 
Do, do they like to travel? Do they like to see music? Whatever it might be. And it will lead to then that next conversation of business. But when you get to know somebody first, that's when the, 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 the shade comes gets lifted. So that's really uh, one of my best practices. Be, it's being authentic. It's not being excited and not being authentic. Be excited, but then be authentic with them. People will all of a sudden become attracted to you. I love it. You're up, Pasquale. All right. So I saw in the comments earlier, someone had a question about like, I'm a little uncomfortable with when, when someone else asks me how they can help me if I'm not looking for something specific. The way around that is when you're talking to someone, pay attention and listen to some key words that they might throw out and then see who in your network um, that word applies to. So like Steve mentions all the time, he's got a partner on the other end of the room uh, when we're in person. And a lot of times I, I have some friends in those rooms and I'm like, okay, I got to keep that person in mind. Someone says something to me that relates to Steve. I'm immediately like, hold on one second. I'm going to go get my friend across the room. And I make an introduction right there. Maybe, you know, I did not help that person, you know, you know, specifically with, with things that I do, but I just helped that person by making a connection with someone else I know. And I was able to, to transfer that trust that I have uh, with my friend to this new connection. And that, you know, you don't know what's going to come out from there, but it, it's, it's a way of throwing your uh, assets into the world freely. I love that. All right, go ahead, Steve, you're up. That's a great, great point, Pasquale. And, and so uh, not to go back to what Heather was saying, but <laughs> I completely agree. Listen, you have to be yourself. And I think one of the things I've learned three powers uh, over the uh, the last decade or two uh, in my self-development, and that is the first power being mentorship, having somebody in your life that, you know, can really have a perspective that you don't have, right? And they look, they can see your blind spots and things of that nature. And even maybe see potential that, and, and help you with potential you don't even know you had. Um, so mentorship is one. Second is is self development. And I kind of alluded to that, right? And growing in your, yourself. And and if I I've had a, cra a crazy journey, right? And I have finally gotten to a place, thank God, that that I that I love myself and I accept who I am. And and I do have my weird moments as well. I can be a little weird or a little corny. People know me. I have a very corny sense of humor. And by the way, the third power is, is networking or connecting like we're talking about today. Um, but I do want to mention, you know, one thing is, and you know, we've got a couple of friends, uh, you know, I think uh, Cameron and I have spoke about this, maybe even A.B. and I. Um, there's somebody, I won't mention who it is, but but he believes, say he's fine. He, he believes that, you know, you either like me or don't. Now, and that's fine. I agree with that. But at the same time, we're also looking to attract, not repel, right? It's the same reason why you probably don't want to talk about your extreme, you know, mentality about politics or extreme about religion, because yes, yes, that might be who you are, but do you need to tell everybody about it right away? Maybe you want to wait till you're more of an, in an intimate setting where you've kind of let the, the children of each other within each other kind of get to know each other first before you start talking about and showing some of that stuff. Again, don't don't hide who you are, but there's times and places for everything. I guess that was kind of where I was going. I don't want you to. Uh, yeah, I agree. Everyone should have their personality. Don't 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 dis, don't don't mask who you are. Be who yourself, but and love who you are. But also, we're looking to attract, not repel. Especially those of us who are in, in business development or you know in that kind of thing or, or owners in businesses. Steve, I love you know the the child within you talking to the child within them. That's beautiful. I love it too. All right, Amy, you're up. Another thing that I've learned through this, and, and, and networking is something relatively new to me uh, for, because I, I never had to do any of it in my career, um, is that there is a, a, a thing called the, the, the uh, comfort zone. And that's the, the comfort zone is the danger zone. And we should really embrace getting out of our comfort zone and going into discomfort because the discomfort is what's going to get you to where you want to be. Otherwise, you would be there already. So, you know, you know, we talking about these stories. Look, Steve's story exactly is that getting the shy, introverted kid from the Bronx. Well, without the, that could be the most uncomfortable thing in the world to, to get out of that and, and, and to all of a sudden be able to talk to anyone he wanted to talk to. That's getting out of your comfort zone. So 
really, I, I find that to be so crucial and, and so important. Um, you know, they say that speaking in public or, or people are, fear that more than they fear dying. So really, I mean, you know, we've all heard that before. So you'd rather be the one um, uh, in, in, in the coffin than rather be the one giving the eulogy. I mean, come on. So get out of the comfort zone. It's the best thing you could do for yourself. I love that. Fanny, I know you wanted to jump in here. Yeah, no, I, I so resonate with what you just said, Amy. Because um, on the other side of discomfort is growth. Right? On the other side of discomfort is learning. And so definitely lean into it. And whether it's networking, getting on video, um, I, I have a favorite quote where, or a hashtag, it's hashtag do it scared. If anything, people will feel more connected with you if they feel like you're a little nervous and that's okay. Um, I, in fact, I, I kind of lean into more of people that might be standing off in a corner at an event or the, the shy or quiet one. I tend to want to walk up to them and talk to them and, uh, and it's okay. So whether you're public speaking or just going up to a, a stranger at a networking event, I think do it scared, lean into the discomfort and the more you do it, the more it'll get easier. I knew there was a reason that I really, really connected with Fanny. And I'm going to be vulnerable with folks because I know people see me as outgoing guy, energy, colors all over the place. But the like the scariest thing or one of the most uncomfortable, most uncomfortable things for me is walking into that networking event, going to the registration desk and walking past it and seeing like people's backs and, and they're at the cocktail tables and I'm there to promote my business and I have, you know, I don't know and nobody's walking up to me and I have to like push myself to do that so many times. Like I'm getting ready to go out the door and I'm like feeling that feeling of like, oh man, I, I don't, I don't really want to go do this. I push myself to do, I'm, you know, entrepreneur, I own a business, I push myself to do it. Uh, but there's definitely been times when I didn't make it out that door. So to have somebody like Fanny walk up to me at the event. Um, and make me I bet 75% of people think the exact same thing mm. in their heads. We just don't know it. <laughs> uh, it's such one, a big deal. Such one, a big deal. One easy way around that is go with a partner, you know, get, take a friend and say, listen, I got this networking thing I want to go to. I'm not going to know anybody there. Let's go together. Let's try to work around. You never know. You know, maybe if you're afraid to talk to someone, the person you went with, it, very likely that they made a connection there. And, and they're going to say, hey, come and meet my friend Cameron. Yeah, and I love the, the piece on that. And I've started giving myself permission to ask people because that can be very intimidating too. Like, you know, again, yeah, oh, Cameron's an extrovert. It's, it, I feel shy to ask somebody to do that. So it's great advice. And you got to give yourself permission to ask people uh, to do that. I know Steve wanted to jump in and then we'll, we'll get out of Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I mean, you know, thank you for everyone sharing and being vulnerable here. And I think vulnerability is is so crucial uh, in human relationships. Um, you know, and and as as AB said, I, you know, shy and introverted. Yeah, it's terrifying to go into networking. And and I'm so grateful that we're on, you know, a, more of a platform like this. To me, the whole Zoom networking is is a blessing for us shy introverted people, right? Because you could just go and you know, right click a, a person's picture and then you're chatting directly to them instead of having a, the, terror, the terror of going walking around in, in, in the room. But I wanted to just mention something for those of us, if this resonates for some of the folks in the, in the, uh, in the room here. Um, it, it's, you know, there, there's, and my slogan is, my favorite slogan is there's danger in the comfort zone. And I'll, I'll give you the example, right? How many times have we eaten something that's, that's so good but we know it's so bad, right? Like, like, like uh, one of my biggest weaknesses is butter pecan haagen ice cream. And I will literally sit in front of a TV, not even, not lately, but I put on a lot of weight because of this, by the way. I'll eat the whole, I don't know if it's a pint, by the way. It seemed like they made it smaller. Maybe it's now a pint. I don't know if it's a pint anymore, but whatever. I'll eat it in one sitting. And it's so good when you're eating it, but afterwards you feel so horrible, right? And, and I believe that that's what comfort zone is to me. It, it feels good while you're not, you're sort of in that comfort zone, but, but then you just sort of feel like, ah, oh, you know, and when I get out of my comfort zone, it's like how you feel right after, after a really, really good workout. Like for a while I was doing spin class 
And oh man, what a what a drag doing spin class. But after spin class, you feel really good, right? And that's what I and I try to focus on. Okay, I'm just gonna get through this because afterwards, I know I'll be so excited and proud of myself. And and that's what I want to encourage you guys to do as you at, break through your comfort zone. Is just you just realize how good you're gonna feel after you do it. I love that. Um, we're gonna go to Heather, but uh, I wanted to get Alan's question here. What do you do once you feel you've made a good connection? but the other person doesn't seem interested in you. Um, I, I definitely have some feedback on this. Go ahead, Heather, and I'll, uh, I'll jump in some point after. Go ahead, Heather. Sure, sure. Well, I, I'm gonna go back for a moment and and I love what you were saying um, about comfort zone, Stephen. I just, I'm moving on to something else and that has to do with, um, you know, we're talking about like when you're over in the corner in a live networking event and you're, you're kind of looking at your phone just as an excuse to not have to go talk to people. I feel like sometimes how that translates. Yeah, exactly. I know. Right. <laughs> well, I don't because I'm ridiculously outgoing, but you know, I know because I go, I, I love to go over and talk to, to you. Um, but, it's the same thing when you're in like some of these amazing communities, these networking online virtual events. And I was just on one last night that was so good, but you don't turn on your video, right? And I understand, like, first of all, you know, I don't always like to do my hair, right? I get it, but, but it's the same thing. So you're breaking the best way that you can connect with people in virtual networking. You're, you're cutting out the ability for them to see you and look in your eyes and get to get a feel, get an energy from you. So I'm just going to encourage anyone who is uncomfortable with it and just doesn't like to turn on the video to do it anyway. It doesn't, doesn't matter if your hair is in a ponytail, just turn it on, look people in the eye and feel them. And that's how you're going to make really deep and amazing connections. And Alan, I'm going to send it to Cameron for the answer to this, but my answer would be to follow up with warmth. Go ahead, Cam. There we go. All right. That's it to me. I appreciate that. Now, listen, by the way, we have a show coming up. I don't remember the the, the week coming up, but I think it's in two weeks. Uh, I believe it's going to be uh, how to maximize video meetings. So what Heather just talked about is, is a gem. And we're going to cover a whole episode on some of those kinds of things because it is so valuable. Uh, you know, and, and by the way, this is such a microscope right now. I'm looking at my own ugly face. And, you know, every little nuance you could see, right? Whereas if you're in a, you know, normal networking environment, there's a lot of distraction. So, but anyway, back to, to Alan's question. Um, so, uh, Alan, and, and I know Alan very well. Uh, we, in our, we are in the same networking group. Uh, Alan's a great guy. But, but my challenge, not to you, Alan, per se, but maybe, is to really question, question did you really make a good connection? Like, if you're questioning that, my question is, did you make a good connection? Are you looking at the body language? Are you looking at and listening to the responses? Do you do you really get getting? Are you getting the signals that they really connected with you? And if they didn't, maybe you didn't. And and maybe that's something to look at, right? I I had a um I'm, I'm mentoring and coaching a young man. He's about 23. Is uh, he's a good guy, really good guy. Um, and, and, you know, he recorded a video call that he did with somebody because I'm trying to help him with his communication skills. And, I, and, he, and he seemed really proud. And the call was really good in the sense that he sounded comfortable and confident. But 90, he did 95% of the talking, 95%. And, you know, when he asked for feedback, I said, well, I, I want to talk about this with you. But it, before, until we have a chance to talk, I want to ask you, what percentage of you spoke versus what percentage he spoke? And, and I think sometimes, it, it, you know, in our minds, we think we're really connecting with people, but I wonder if we really are. And so my, my challenge to you, Alan, or anyone else who, who relates to that question is, did you really make a good connection? Did you really connect with the person? And, and if, if, if that is the, if the true answer is yes, I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe you really didn't. So that's my answer. Can you hear you, Cam? Cam, yeah, right here. Thank you. I appreciate you all. So thank you for your patience with me. Yes. Um, I think 
this you know, there's a lot of different kinds of connections. Alan, it'd be great if you did like a follow up and told us what kind of connection this was, whether it was like a, a collaborator, a client, uh, maybe somebody that you were looking for for mentorship. It'd be uh, give a little bit more insight for the panel here. But I'll say this because I've been looking for speakers for the show and uh, definitely looking for clients in the future. And so one of the things or at least one of the strategies that I've been using is you know, maybe I'm not on somebody's radar now as somebody that is a meaningful uh, connection to them. And one of the strategies that I've been playing is by, you know, and I believe that every company needs to be a media company in this age, right? And so Alan uh, has a Be Local magazine that he sends out. I know when we talked one-on-one, -on -one, I was talking to him about, you know, the, the, the importance of having the online uh, profile, being on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a place for, for viral growth. Uh, TikTok is a place for viral growth. Clubhouse is, is pretty big right now. Uh, but the idea that you can uh, maximize the potential of your, your offline uh, product through the online channels. So having people see you in multiple different ways and putting yourself out there so that um, they're getting hit. And this is like product marketing, right? If you want somebody to buy that Snicker bar, we've all seen Snicker bar a thousand times, but to sell that first Snicker bar, somebody probably needed to see it three or four times. So the more people see you and see your product and other people that endorse you, uh, LinkedIn referrals are really big, right? Getting people to endorse you, um, being on uh, Google My Business, all the different ways for people to see you. And then following up with um, the, the mentions and the newspapers and the events that you're doing. And I imagine that a lot of those cold connections will somehow suddenly turn warm uh, down the line as people really continue to see the value of you. Some people are going to see the value in you right away. Some people need to see you a few times like that original snicker bar kind of thing, right? All right, who else wants to jump in? I wasn't paying attention to comments. And Can I add to that, Cameron? Please, please, um, please. I, I'd like to take a different approach around that. And my approach has been, the older I get, is to trust in the universe and trust in the process. And I think sometimes it has nothing to do with it being personal. Sometimes it's just about timing. Um, I've had folks that I connected with like last year and then we didn't actually talk till this year or and, and sometimes the timing is just better later. And, and so we can sit there and analyze and pick things apart. But I think a better approach, if I may propose this, is, is to trust that maybe timing wise now is not the time. And if it's meant to be, and if you still want to continue conversations, then you will. And a lot of times it could be totally external things, like they have a hundred things on their to-do list and they just can't get to get to that next thing. Um, so I think trust in timing and when it's right, it'll be right. Yeah. Pa patience is such a big deal, right? I mean, maybe, maybe uh, that's, that's a good topic mm -hmm. of just being patient, right? We all expect it right now, tomorrow, this afternoon, but sometimes, you know, people take a little bit of time. Somebody's busy, right? I, I was talking to somebody about being frustrated with not getting a response on something. You know, you put two questions in an email, somebody responds to the first question, don't be frustrated. They probably just are trying to get through their inbox the same way you are. Follow up with the second question with kindness. I like uh, uh, some of these comments. There's so many in here, are so so appreciative of everybody. Uh, I'm trying to get to them all, but uh, I think I got one here, follow up with warmth, right? <laughs> uh, from Heather uh, that Fanny uh, chimed in on. That is the way. Uh, who, who was gonna jump in next? I got a bunch here. I got uh, AB. already. I could go. AB was AB. Go ahead, AB. And then so Steve. just very quick uh, regarding timing with what Fanny said. You know, we're in a season right now, and you know, like like what Steve said earlier about us being on Zoom. Let's not talk about when we're going to meet again. You know what? Who knows when that'll be? Let's embrace this beauty of the fact that we can network this way on the video on Zoom, especially for those that are uncomfortable about meeting in person. Meet this way on Zoom. And then you know what? Someday when you'll meet again in person, that'll be a lot more comfortable because you've had so much skill at doing it through video. 
So this is a season that we need to embrace as opposed to need to abhor. I love that. And, and Heather, thank you so much for, for throwing this in the comments. Yeah, speaking of network and reaching out to us and to others whose comments you like with a warm connection. I think everybody on this stage is really receptive to connection. So don't feel afraid to reach out. I think sometimes, especially when we see people on TV and in media, we're a little intimidated. Um, reach out, uh, reach out and, and don't be afraid of that connection. I love that. Uh, I think Pasquale and then Steve, go ahead, Pasquale. All right, cool. Yeah. Appreciate that. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Pasquale. My apologies. No, no apologies necessary, brother. It, it's simple. You, you have to remember that, um, a priority for you may not necessarily be a priority for a person you're trying to work with. And you have to remind yourself that if whatever you're trying to accomplish becomes more important to you in your mind than it is for that person, then you're going to press and you run the risk of, you know, damaging the relationship. So really pay attention to the, the person you're working with's um, timeline. You know, Fanny mentioned it and everybody in this room has mentioned it before. Just because they're not ready to move right now doesn't mean that they're not ready to move. Just continue to be cordial Keep the relationship going. Check in once in a while. Hey, how's it going? Um, and, and sometimes you don't even have to mention the business transaction. Uh, if you're simply just checking in to say hello, they may bring it up, and then that might be the time when it's time to act. I love that. All right, Steve, I want you to kind of close out our conversation here, and then we'll go around uh, to folks for final statements on the good, bad, and ugly of networking. Uh, I want uh, everybody as they're they're uh, speaking to let folks know how uh, people can reach out to them the best way. Obviously, uh, everybody on here is on LinkedIn, but uh, if there's a website or some other place you'd like them to go, I'd love you uh, to tell the audience that. And with that, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I mean, everyone at a tremendous value. And and uh, so, Fanny, what you said, which, which is really uh, priceless, about you know the the universe and timing so I'll, I'll tell a quick funny story right so this is oh. back in the you're freezing steve days when we were out and about public um in in networking oh wow am i still freezing yeah a little bit still froze wow I, and i restarted my computer and everything you yeah, hear me okay no now. Yeah, we can hear you. All right, so just back in the day when I was going, I was going out and about and being a public and that goal of making, making, tur turning three total strangers into friends. And so here I am. I'm going, I'm going in. Uh, I'm talking to somebody, and I kind of like, like maybe like he didn't ignored me or something. And I'm, and I, and I, and I, I kind of follow him around. It was like you know, like a Barnes and Noble by the by the by the the magazines. And I followed him around, and then I I want to talk to him again. And, and finally, it might have been a third time, he says, no habla inglés. Like, like here I was thinking it was me, and it wasn't. It was just he didn't speak the language. And I think a lot of times we have a tendency to try to internalize. It's something we did, something. No, I mean, it's what Fanny talked about. It could be just other things, nothing to do with us, right? You know, I had one last story I'll say is, you know, I remember a um, hearing a story about this this young this guy driving this beautiful race car and this kid throws this rock at the car and he gets out of the car, runs after the kid and, and catches the kid. And the kid says, Mr. 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 My, my brother just, you know, cut his you know wrist open and I need help. And I could, I, I needed to find a way to, to get someone's attention. Meanwhile, we thought, you know, the worst. Meanwhile, it was because he needed help. So remember there's other stuff that's going on in people's lives. Don't be taking it so personal. That was powerful. That was that was extremely powerful. All right, my uh, amazing panelists. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Heather Hansen O'Neill. Go ahead, Heather. How did I know that you were going to start with me? Um, you know, first of all, I just have to say how much I appreciate the engagement of those who were on here and you know and and enjoying the, and adding their own insights as well as all of the panelists here, you guys rock. Thank you for inviting me guys. Um, I just wanna say this about networking. Embrace it, love it, play with it. It's It doesn't have to be stressful. It doesn't have to be painful. You know, just release the pressure from it. 
go into it with a sense of of enjoyment and curiosity and you will get great things from it i love that all right uh next up we'll go to ab and then pasquale thank you heather that that that, that was awesome so you know networking you know it I, I've heard this term before. Networking is is like not working. Now you, you know what true working is. If someone that has to lay cement on a hundred degree day, or work on a roof, you know all we do is we just talk to people, be real and authentic, and smile a little bit, and 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 the world will come to you. Just if, if if you're good to the world, will the world will come back? No doubt. You know, be a giver. Just be a giver, and then once you're a giver, things will come back to you. Well, I appreciate that so much, A.B. All right, Mr. Pasquale Palumbo. Yeah, what A.B. said. <laughs> no, but uh, on top of that, I agree with I agree with that, and Heather's as well. But, I mean, realistically speaking, um, you know, it's it's sort of cliche to say, but – I've heard it said before that you're really only, you know, you could be only one relationship away from your life changing astronomically. And the only way for that to happen really is to get out there and, and meet people. And maybe it's not the person you meet, but maybe it's someone that um, you talk to in there that connects you with someone else in their life. So you never know, but you got to get at it. Yeah, I love that. All right, Miss Fanny Dunnigan. <laughs> um, I'll end with my two hashtags, hashtag do it scared, even if your voice trembles and hashtag shine your light. The world needs to hear your voice. And even if it's one-on-one -on -one or one to 10,000, the world needs to hear your voice. And I was preparing for a presentation and I was tying communications to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I don't know how many of you know about that, but the premise of that is after our basic needs like food, shelter, air, safety, security, housing, all those things, after all those things are met in our lives, the next level up from the things that we need as human beings is love and belonging. And we all crave it. We all need it. We all want it. And at the end of the day, just treat networking as a place to connect. That's it. I love that. Always inspirational. Fanny Dunnigan, thank you so much for being here. Pasquale Palumbo, Heather Hansen O'Neill, A.B. Gabor. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love being a part of this show. Thank you, Steve, uh, for allowing me to be a part of it. Mr. Steve Spiro, the master connector, please close this out. This is this has been tremendous, and and I, I appreciate all the panelists. You guys are amazing. You rocked it, um, and and I just I want to reiterate what what Fanny just talked about. Right, we are we are in a world where there's still a lot of darkness. Right, I hear a lot of stories, especially young people are very depressed, and I believe that networking, connecting, reaching out is a is a way to break that barrier, to break that uh, isolation, to to really um, get out um, of that dark place. And so we are the light, right? And it is, and I agree, Fanny, we absolutely are the light and we need to shine that light. We need to be, you know, you know broadcasting it loud uh, to everyone we can. So uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for all the participants, not just the panelists, but the participants. We wouldn't have this show if it wasn't for you folks. Thank you guys. Uh, you guys are amazing. and. Uh, I'm going to say what my friend right here, A.B. Gabor, says all the time. Uh, I think, yeah, A.B.'s got to say it. He's got to do oh, it. Go ahead, A.B. Oh, he's on mute. You, you got... 2020 <laughs> theme song. Oh, we can all say on the All right, one, two, three, crush it. <laughs> all right, everybody, I, I just, uh, I want, again, thank you so much. Uh, everybody that's watching, please, please, uh, if you're interested in doing something on LinkedIn, you got to go follow Fanny Dunnigan. She's amazing. She's going to help you out. Uh, if you're trying to figure something out on LinkedIn, uh, she is the one to go to. Pasquale Palumbo uh, is somebody that is just 
you know, we call Steve uh, the master connector, but there's a lot of master connectors out there and you probably got a few of them in your network. Pasquale Palumbo is somebody that has made me a better human being and I'm very thankful to him. Avi Gabor, uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the group that we're in, Master Networks, we've got three uh, Master Networks members here uh, tonight. And, and uh, you know, this is just something that uh, it, it's a powerful group. And a lot of it is on the storytelling and connecting with each other. And we do that here. I'm so appreciative of it. Heather Hanson O'Neill, I've known you for a lot of years, part of MPI, part of the MPI family, Meeting Professionals International. So I love bringing uh, my communities together. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, again, once and uh, for all, uh, close this out, Steve Spiro. Let them know what we're doing next week on February 5th, and I'll try to throw in the uh, the audio here for uh, the Master Connector. Go ahead, Steve. Absolutely. So actually, I was, uh, I was saying it right. Next week is actually the 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 show on the 5th to 2 p.m. on maximizing ways to maximize your video meetings. So you want to miss it. Share this with everybody. Connect with everyone that you can here on the show, both the panelists as well as the, the people that participated. Uh, but we're going to have a great show. It's just We just keep getting momentum and momentum. So thank you to, to uh, 10K Cards for being our sponsor. Uh, appreciate you folks. And uh, Cameron, all, all I have to say is appreciate you, sir. You are awesome. You are the man. You got the odds behind the curtain. You make all the magic happen. Appreciate you. You guys have an amazing day. Thank you so much. Here we go. Your Friday. Fired up Friday. With Steve Spiro, the Master Connector. I am Steve Spiro, the Master Connector. Over the next hour of this Master Connection series, we will take a deep dive into the different ways to connect and network effectively. See us and hear us right now. So, LinkedIn, we are on here. We're getting ready. Hear from experts along with Steve Spiro, who went from being shy and introverted to the master connector. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a master connection series. Thank you.